Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to our Halloween episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. Now, today's episode is all about spooky Halloween sculptures. Specifically, we're gonna be making bats because it's freaking Halloween, and I'm so excited. Um, so I'm gonna go through the whole process of how to make a little bat dude. Uh, but this is a really fun process that not only can be used for really fun Halloween decor or if you're, you know, looking to just decorate your house with random sculpture items, uh, you know, you can do a, a lot of things. Now, before we jump completely into today's episode, I wanted to, quick reminder for everybody out there, AOC Art of the Carolinas is happening this year. It is going to be November 12th through the 14th, and if you are unfamiliar, uh, it's a giant trade show where you get a lot of discounts on art supplies. Uh, there's also a lot of workshops as well, uh, but the workshops go from the 11th through the 14th, so they do start one day early. Uh, I'm also teaching myself. I won't actually be a skeleton, I promise. I will be a normal person, uh, teacher, person thing. But, uh... <laughs> Um, if you are interested though, make sure you book your classes now because they do tend to sell out. I know the uh, hotels are also getting pretty full as well. So go check that out, artofthecarolinas.com. Now for today's episode, all of the plaster cloth sculpture items that I'm going to be showing you uh, is available in our teacher cart. And if you go to the website jerrysartorama.com, type in the search bar the today's class code, which I believe is on this side, uh, right below my little bat skeleton here. Uh, that is JL218, JL218. So that's today's class code. If you type that in the search bar, the teacher cart should show up and give you all the items that are going to be covering today. Uh, and I believe possibly a couple more just because I wanted to toss those in for you guys to be able to check out. Uh, but I'll touch base on those. So, besides goofy little bats that you can make, um, you can also do live casting. Uh, so with uh, plaster cloth, uh, you know, this, this is actually my foot. If you uh, want to check that out, there you go. That's my foot. Uh, this is my hand. Thumbs up, guys. Uh, you can actually use these things to uh, cast on your, you know, live body parts. Uh, so if you wanted to cast your arm, your leg, uh, or... Oh, this is a little heavy. <sighs> you wanted to cast the whole child. You could do that. Katie, Katie did this, actually. I don't know how she got the child to sit still for long enough to do this, but she did somehow. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of candy was involved. Uh, I've had. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so you can do live casting with this stuff. Now, if you are interested in doing live casting, because I'm not going to be covering that today, uh, there's a lot of tutorials, and I could actually do an entire class on that if you guys are interested. Pop it in the chat below. Uh, but it is very quick. Uh, it does This does set up quite fast. Uh, but it does not give you a ton of detail like you would if you were to cast with like alginate. So if I wanted to, I could actually take my hand sculpture here, pour in uh, either resin or uh, plaster of Paris, and then take the cast that I actually made originally off of that, and then I would have a positive mold of my hand instead of the negative form. Uh, so I, you can keep it going from there, but um, if you are doing live casting, just remember, it does stick to hair, so you do need to apply to uh, some kind of like a releasing agent. So Vaseline or Aquaphor, something that has that like petroleum jelly kind of a, a additive into it. So it will release off of your hair because it doesn't feel good when you have to pull it off. Um, uh, the other fun thing is that if you are interested in doing this uh, and you wanted to get those details, uh, I did double check this. You can put these, maybe not the painted version, but more like the raw plaster version. Uh, you can put these in the oven. So if you wanted to add Sculpey on top of this and then further sculpt uh, things off of your plaster cloth sculptures, you can do that as well, which is really cool and you get a lot of detail that way. Um, but I'm gonna be showing you uh, essentially the life cycle of a bat. And we're gonna start here. So this is our end game. This is where we want to end up. And I just want to make sure that you guys can see 
kind of the different stages, you know? And I'm gonna show you how to do different aspects of this. So um, you can make anything under the sun. So let's go over the basic sculpture materials that I'm gonna be using um, to get to this first stage, which is armature sculpting. Uh, so this is the armature, which is underneath all of the plaster that I've created. So uh, armature is just like the, the base form. It's uh, usually a lot smaller than your original, like the, the end result. So my plaster cloth is gonna go on here and it's gonna get even larger. So I do have to take that into account. Uh, so, you know, his little body is not as uh, beefy as I would have made it if, you know, I wanted it to get a little bit bigger. So I have to just make sure that my armature is a little bit thinner than what I want to be. So um, the materials we're using, first thing, is armature wire. Uh, this comes in different uh, thicknesses. So what I have right here is 1 16th, which is actually the majority of what I use for my bats. Because uh, it's pretty small, I didn't need a really big wire. Uh, but you can use a uh, thicker wire like this one right here, which is an eighth of an inch wire. And then it also goes into one quarter of an inch and then three sixteenths. So it can get much thicker than even, say, this. Uh, but this is all aluminum, by the way. All the armature materials is aluminum. So even though we are putting wet uh, plaster cloth on top of it, it's not gonna rust on you because it doesn't have that iron content. So it, aluminum doesn't rust. Uh, then what I actually sculpted his little body out of here is wire mesh. Now, I wanted to show you guys this on the side camera so you guys can really see the difference here. So Katie, if you can pop over to the side camera, I'm just going to show you guys this. Give us a second, there we go. All right, so we have three different uh, grades of the mesh here. Uh, this right here is our fine mesh. So as you can see, the weave is really small. Um, it's actually very easily bent. Um, it's, it's really nice uh, material, but whenever it comes to this mesh, uh, you really need to make sure you wear work gloves, and I'll show you that in just a second, but they do get quite sharp. But this right here, Kind of show it to you this way. Uh, this is our medium. So the weave is a little bit uh, further apart and it's a little bit harder, a little bit stiffer to bend kind of a thing. I can still very easily bend it with my hands, but um, it definitely is much, much more uh, stiffer than the fine mesh. And then last but not least, we have, as I try to make sure that I roll my other mesh out of the way, <laughs> This right here is our rough. So as you can see, let me put my hand under here without hopefully hurting myself. Um, this right here is our rough mesh. Now this is uh, much, much more stiffer than the fine or the medium. And you know, as you can see, the weave of the mesh is uh, much, much farther apart. It's a lot larger. Um, so let's switch back to the other camera here so you guys can see. So the fine mesh is what I would use for smaller sculptures because it's a lot easier to bend, uh, which is exactly what I used for my little uh, skeleton bat armature, right? The medium is the ones that I would use for a little bit larger of a, oop, and it's attached to me. Uh, <laughs> the medium is what I would use for a, uh, like a, again, like a medium sized uh, sculpture, something that's gonna be a little bit bigger than like say a smaller bat uh, just because it's got that stiffness to it it's really hard to get a very small sculpture out of this um, and then the rough is the one that I would use for a much much larger um, kind of a sculpture now you know you could even use this for a medium-sized sculpture depending on you know what you wanted to do because uh, the really cool thing is that if I wanted to this could be my finished sculpture. I could, you know, hang this and that could be it. That That's all I needed to do. And that was the uh, kind of look that I was going for. I could absolutely keep my sculpture as a wire and mesh kind of armature. Um, I've also seen people take the mesh and uh, cut flower petals and sculpt it that way. And it's it, there's nothing on the actual mesh. 
it's just the mesh itself and that's the sculpture which is really really fun um, and you, you can also paint this but um, I would probably recommend some kind of like a spray payment uh, but with these like I said you want to make sure you put some gloves on now the gloves I'm using today by the way are not gardening gloves they are not latex gloves, they are work gloves. So they are very, very strong. Uh, the reason why is because, and this is, you kind of saw that attached to my, uh, my sleeve here. This edge right here is crazy sharp. Uh, and I, I can attest to that because I have tiny little cuts all over both of my hands. <laughs> uh, while I was making these, I actually ended up stopping um, pretty early on and buying some work gloves because uh, I didn't have, or I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't find my old pair. Uh, and I just, I couldn't take it anymore. This also really dries your hands out for some reason. I don't know why. I, and maybe it's the coating of whatever's on this, uh, but it, it makes you feel like, if you ever have handled um, cardboard boxes, it makes you feel like it's just soaking up all the moisture out of your hands. So this is just a, work gloves are really a necessity. Um, and latex gloves, these will go straight through them, so you need something that's a little bit kind of beefier. Um, now, the cool thing with this armature wire is that you can actually see, um, I have a diagonal on mine, and the reason why is because I like to rip strips of it off, um, because you can cut these uh, quite easily with uh, tin snips. Uh, you can also use, let me grab my scissors, you can also use scissors to cut these, right? Very easily, just a household pair of scissors. Actually, this is my studio scissors, as you can see. They're covered in gunk. Um, but it, it cuts it off really, really easily. But uh, I usually end up just tearing mine uh, into strips, and that's how I ended up you know, getting it off of there. Uh, I know, and I've double checked this, I can rip the fine, I can also rip the medium, I cannot rip the rough texture that's a little bit hard, but uh, scissors can actually cut all three of them. Just make sure that if you do cut with scissors, use a pair of scissors that you don't care about because it is going to dull your blade. Uh, so if you use your really nice pair of scissors, I'm sorry, it's going to kill your scissors. <laughs> um, but uh, you can very easily, once you get a piece off, start manipulating your wire form uh, and to like, as I got um, like his little snout here, right? As you can see, it kind of comes out a little bit. Um, I actually ended up taking my pinky and shoving it in there and kind of molding the wire form around it like that. Um, I would actually suggest, because again, this, this mesh is just super rough on your hands. Uh, if you're not brave like me, use something like a Sharpie or something like that to help you manipulate uh, your, your armature wire. You can also end up using uh, various tools like needle nose pliers because uh, that very easily you know, manipulates it uh, and gets it really nice and tightly uh, crimped and you're not touching the actual mesh with your hands. Do we have a question? We do. Um, your little bat form there, do you yeah. fill those forms with the wire mesh? Do you fill them with something else or just leave them hollow? See, here's the thing with the, the form here, I actually just have mesh because when I was doing these, I was not at, in my studio, I was not at home, I literally just had mesh. <laughs> is it filled with mesh? This one is filled with mesh, and the reason why is because how I made his legs. So his legs are, uh, and I'll show you how I make the legs. His legs are a piece of wire that's attached here and it goes straight through his body. So I wanted there to be some substance to him uh, in order to kind of hold that wire in place, and then I went on top and actually wire formed even more to secure this little leg wire in place. Um, and then uh, if you wanted to, you could make a little bit more of an open form uh, and keep it open like that. I've actually seen uh, people fill it up with, um, oh, it's a spray insulation foam that you can get from any home improvement store. Uh, it's a can of foam, like spray foam. Uh, it's found in your, uh, it's like the insulation department. 
and it's it's just I think it's called great foam or something <laughs> weird like that uh, you can actually spray that in here the only thing with that is that your spray foam expands as it cures and it'll come through all those little uh, the holes in your mesh and so you're left with a nice solid form that is really lightweight and it doesn't have a whole lot of like you know weight to it so you can move it around not a big problem but you're gonna have to come back with like a razor blade and carve that back off kind of a thing but you can also still shove uh, the wire through that because it's it's still foam it's still got that um, softness to it uh, but when it comes to manipulating the wires um, and that's why I also have wire cutters on my uh, table here because I, I usually like to use these to just cut my wires uh, it does not take a whole lot of effort to get a piece of wire off but usually uh, needle nose pliers also has a little wire cutter in the the part here so if you are trying to manipulate your wire with this part of it you're probably going to cut it just like you would uh, wire cutters it's not as good as wire cutters which is why I have the wire cutters but they will cut it um, but when it comes to like the feet this is how I ended up getting them. I, I just take it and I start bending it around. So you can see I'm manipulating my wire to be his little toes, right? You can take it, you can crimp it that way and then kind of come back and do another toe. And then um, it's, it's all about just manipulating your wire to do whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, there's no really uh, right way of doing this just kind of uh, start molding your your wire and seeing what can happen it's a very inexpensive as well so it's not like you're gonna be uh, burning through some expensive materials you know but the way that I usually start any of my sculptures is a quick little sketch so as you can see I wanted a round tummy I wanted a nice round head I wanted his wings and that's how I ended up getting my little armature sculptures to be about the same size uh, because I wanted them to match for you guys to understand what I was doing. Um, so this is how I ended up. I ended up lining his little arm on the paper and then manipulating the wings, uh, the wires, to get exactly the length and the uh, kind of the curvature that I was looking for. Uh, now, I actually did this flat, so I ended up having his arms pretty flat. And then you, before you do... Uh, the, oh, why, why is this word escaping me? Plaster cloth, that's the word. <laughs> plaster cloth, before you actually plaster cloth uh, your armature, get him in the form that you want him to be in. Uh, once you actually do plaster cloth, like uh, again, I have the full life cycle of bats, guys. I have uh, the baby stages, the mid-teen mid stages, and then the adult bats, right? So uh, in the, the plaster form, I can't really bend, I can bend this a little bit because it is technically cracking down here and I can feel that, um, but you can't really bend his wings anymore once you have that uh, plaster cloth on there, the bandages. So uh, make sure when you have him in this form, finish his little stance however way you want him like if this guy, I want him to be a little bit more hunched over and have his wings kind of forward and maybe I want him to say hello, so I'll pull that one up. <laughs> you can manipulate him in any which way you want in this stage, but once you do plaster cloth him, uh, you're going to kind of kind of be stuck. Now the other thing that you guys can probably see in this uh, are his little eyeballs. They are made of hot glue. <laughs> Um, the reason why I do that is because I uh, don't want to have to sculpt little eyes. So when I plaster cloth them, I can, it, the plaster will actually stick to the hot glue, but I can very easily scrape it back off. But I know where that eye is going to land. Now also, if I don't like it with the hot glue, I can fix it before I get to my final stages because I can very easily pop that off or cut it off with a, a razor blade. Uh, I've also used hot glue if I wanted to uh, be really lazy just to tack some of my wire mesh down so it's not moving on me. Like this right here, uh, this was just a little chunk of wire mesh going around his uh, wire. So I actually ended up putting a dab of hot glue down here just so it doesn't slide up and down while I'm plaster clothing it. Um, just to kind of secure it into place. 
Now I've seen people use uh, masking tape, which is why you'll see that into the um, in the, the teacher's cart, which is actually how I got to this guy. So this was uh, some wire and then I used masking tape around that just to kind of sculpt my little tentacle uh, and then I plaster clothed it. So, uh, you know, sky's kind of the limit when it comes to building your actual sculptures. But, um, yeah, this is the, the armature stage. And then uh, let me actually, I'm going to show you guys how to get to the plaster cloth stage because we do need to move. So if you guys have any uh, armature questions, throw them at me while I get this stuff ready. Now, this right here is how the plaster cloth bandages come. Uh, I actually have a box of 32, um, just because that's what I happen to have. It's my own personal stash of arm, uh, plaster cloth bandages, uh, but they all come individually wrapped uh, like this. The reason why is because once you open this and you start letting it interact with the humidity in the air, there's a possibility that the plaster is going to actually kind of set and cure in the roll, and that's not going to be very good for you. Um, now, once you open it, it's literally just a roll of cloth that is um, covered in plaster of Paris. Uh, this is the, the raw plaster of Paris, so it's, it does kind of have that drying effect again on your hands, I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm going to actually pull my sleeves up before I get white plaster dust all over them. Uh, but usually you do want to cut these down. Uh, and I'm going to actually not use the ones that I used to, on the, the armature mesh. I'm just going to use my good scissors here. Uh, but when it comes to cutting these down, you don't want to go any smaller than an inch. Now, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to show you why. And I got a bowl of just regular old tap water. Nothing special, nothing fancy, right? So there's my little plaster cloth. Uh, and then once you dip it in and get it wet, you are now activating the plaster, right? And if you have a small little piece like this and you start manipulating it and you are going to eventually have it more or less just kind of fall apart on you. Now you would think that that tiny little piece is great for detail work, but the, the mesh uh, or the, the weave of that fiber that is in the actual plaster cloth bandages, it's not tightly woven. So when you actually, sorry, I have a little bit of like a, string at the end there. Uh, when you do end up getting it wet, it, it starts moving and it will just completely fall apart. So the general rule of thumb on that is that nothing less than one inch as far as your plaster cloth bandage strips. But when it comes to when I was doing his wing, now I had actually cut these into probably strips about this big, so it was maybe three, four inches. I would actually just take my armature and cut the actual bandage down to fit my armature and get it wet that way. So let's get this. Again, you want it to be wet, but you don't want it to be dripping. So I am going to kind of get some of that water off of there, but you do need it fully saturated. Let me pull this down a little bit so you guys can see. All right, now I'm going to actually lay this and get my paper out of there on my table because I'm allowed to make a mess, right? So the way that I did this at home uh, is that I actually just took the plaster cloth and the cool thing is like, with his little, um, his thumb right there, I can actually stick that straight through the plaster cloth and fold it back down. But you can actually just take it and start folding it around your armature, however which way that you want it to be. And then when you get to about this spot, you want to take it and make sure that it is really stuck onto the body of your armature. Now, the cool thing about having the mesh body is that all those little edges of your mesh are going to grab onto that piece of plaster cloth. Uh, and then I'm going to be holding him and supporting him like this while I get another piece of bandage. Usually I have all of these cut beforehand and then I lay that on top and then uh, start rubbing them together just like this. And you can see how all those holes are starting to get filled in with the plaster cloth, or the, the plaster of Paris, and that's gonna make it really, really solid. 
Now, uh, with this stage, and I just took it all off with my hand, with this stage, you really don't want to go any less than two layers for your plaster cloth bandage. Uh, now, I have seen actually people take the plaster cloth bandage and double it up or triple it up and then do this. So they actually just take their plaster cloth. Let me, let me give you an example. We're visual people. So instead of just cutting it here, they'd fold it over on itself like that three times, cut off the extra, and then use it just like that. So you have a real thick layer of plaster cloth bandage. Um, I personally don't like to work that way. It does bulk your surface up real fast, uh, but I like to kind of finesse my sculptures and get them to really be uh, kind of how I want them to be. Uh, just because I, if you work that thickly so quickly, uh, didn't mean to rhyme, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but if you do that on his wing, his wing is going to be really, really, really thick, which is not what I wanted. I wanted his wing to be relatively thin. Um, so even if you wanted to, you could actually do just a little bit of plaster cloth around his, um, the outside of his arm here and leave this portion of it uh, pretty open and raw. And as long as you're supporting this while it cures, and I mean, it's still not cure. It's still very flexible. This will actually... Um, cure just like that. Now it does take a while to cure. Uh, I believe this guy was still technically wet for about 24 hours, but I laid down a good two to three coats of pretty wet plaster cloth bandages on there. Uh, and I mean, I was going one right after the other and you definitely want to overlap as you lay them down because uh, you don't want your edges to be edge to edge because there's not going to be that structure there. You want it to like overlay kind of a thing. We have a question? Hair dryers are pretty popular in other mediums. Is that something that you could use here to help it cure faster? Yes, you can. You can absolutely use a hair dryer to help this cure a little bit faster. Uh, but like right now, I can feel it's already starting to get a little stiff. Uh, now, just because this is so thin, it's probably going to set uh, relatively quickly. Um, but if you are doing the thicker kind of layers, which is what you really want to do if you're doing a sculpture, uh, especially life casting. Life casting, you absolutely need to have at least two layers on your form uh, before you pull it off. Otherwise, it's just a little weak. Um, but like with his bat wing, I'm okay with it being weak because that's not going to be a very structural thing. Um, it's just more decorative. Whereas like I can hang him from here, uh, which FYI, that's a little eye hook that I have stuck into the back of his head so I can hang him later. Um, and then I plaster cloth just around that. So uh, yes, you can use a hair dryer to uh, help this set. Do you have a... I would just say be careful with if you have very thick layers using a hair dryer because it will cause the top layer to cure faster than cracking. the cracking that causes problems. Yeah. Uh, when, it, when it is very, very, very thick, like Katie was just saying, uh, if you do use a hair dryer, it can make the top layer cure where the underlying layer is still wet and it can crack your plaster, which is not good uh, just because you're, it's, it's almost like with the, um, if you were to put something on top of like oil, like acrylics on oils, that doesn't work because the top layer dries and then the bottom layer is still moving and shifting and then it cracks open. Um, that's just kind of one of the name of the game. So you can use it just a little bit to get it to really kind of get to this stage where it's starting to set, but I wouldn't use it overly kind of a deal. So that's the, uh, plaster portion of it. How are we doing on time? Cause I can keep going with this six o'clock. All right. I can keep going on this guy or we can move on to painting and I can show you guys how to paint this cause you can paint your sculptures. Uh, but I'm going to actually do a little bit more plaster work unless you guys vote paint right away. Um, I'm gonna show you how to get this layered. So you do have to fully saturate it. Again, you want it wet, but not dripping completely. So I like to like get my drippies off like that way. And then, don't wring it out because you'll wring out the plaster with it. Exactly, you definitely don't wanna wring it out. Thank you for that, Frida. Uh, she's absolutely correct. Um, now I want to make sure that mine goes down below both of these points here um, just because that's where I didn't have my other plaster cloth before but I do need to make sure that it also still hits up here 
because that's where the other edge of mine is. And then I'm gonna wrap it around and kind of tuck it in here where his body comes over. And then I'm going to push that down into the other one, the other layer that I had, and start smoothing it out. Now right here is where I can feel his little arm. And it sometimes likes to stick to your hand like that. Um, the other thing I have done before is like right here where it's it doesn't want to bend over the form because it's just a little, um, sorry this is hard to show, there's a lot of extra right here and it doesn't want to bend over because it's hitting both the side of his uh, head here and his arm and it's kind of pulling it tight. I have taken, sorry let me get that out of the way, taking my scissors and then just cut just a little bit. It's really hard to cut these when they're wet, unfortunately. And this isn't the greatest pair of scissors in the world. I can't get that to cut. I need, I need a razor blade. Or here, maybe this will work. There we go. All right, sorry. My scissors are a little dead. So I will cut a little bit of a notch there and then I'll manipulate my cloth back down just like that. But I will make sure to come back over with another piece of cloth and go over that separately just to make sure that it's really stuck on there. And I prefer holding my sculpture like this for some odd reason. I don't really put it on the table. And this is set up a little bit more so I'm gonna get my hand, just my hand wet and kind of work that back in. Now, once your plaster cloth cures, it's pretty much there for life. But once it's um, starting to set and it's not fully cured, you do have a little bit of wiggle room, but you can start feeling, like down here I can feel areas where it is kind of, um, kind of got a grittiness to it. I don't wanna overly work that because that is cured. Uh, and if I do that, it's going to crumble off, crumble up and fall off. So there's this little bat wing, right? Now I will continue to work around his body like that, uh, but I know if I just keep going, we're probably gonna run out of time. <laughs> and I don't wanna run out of time because I wanna show you guys that uh, this is gonna be pretty easy to paint. Uh, now, I do have my other bat here, uh, and I can, let me rinse off my hands here. Uh, I can either paint him like the skeleton bat, uh, or I can paint him in the luminescent paints, the glow and black light. I'll let you guys decide uh, which color I'm going to actually paint him. So put your, your uh, vote in the comments there of whether or not you want him painted like this or if you want him painted with crazy colors. And I'll let you guys choose while I wipe my hands off real quick because I got plaster cloth all over it. This is somewhere where you do want to actually uh, plaster cloth in an area that has like a tablecloth on it like this uh, just because that that dust is going to get everywhere. It, it is very easily cleaned up like if I get it on my sleeve or anything uh, I, it washes out of your clothes pretty quick um, as long as it's not like a huge chunk of plaster but that should crumble right off but for the most part it comes out of clothing. I haven't had too big of an issue. Uh, oh, as an alternative, we could also patina the bat and make him look like he's made out of copper, which is exactly what I did here. Uh, so this is a plaster cloth uh, sculpture of my foot, and I made it look like it was aged uh, copper, which was really fun. Uh, now, the colors for this uh, are in the teacher's cart as well uh, as all of the luminescent ones, but let me shove this out of the way here. I do want to show you guys. Actually, let me clean up my mess by throwing it on the floor. So I'm not going to make a bigger mess. I just make a bigger mess, let's be honest. Alright, so I have a black light, right? Fun black light. You guys can actually see 
how the colors, it's really hard to see in this light and I do apologize just because I it would glow so well if I had nothing but these lights on. But it is, I hope, hope that's coming through. You guys can actually see the luminescent Turner Krill gouache is what I use on here. Uh, and I even have, you wanna turn the lights off? I can turn some of them off. See Let's see if we can do that. Cause I also have all the swatches here, which is the, it comes in two, three, four, five, six, seven colors, the luminescent ones. So this is the Turner Krill gouache is the ones that I actually used here. There we go. Oh, spooky. Yes, spooky. I like it. It's the Halloween episode. Yay. So as you can see, I have my black lights here and it makes all of it just glow so well. Uh, and these are the luminescent colors. I have them all in the teacher's cart. So there's the white, yellow, orange, red, rose, blue, and green. And that's what I use on my tentacle here. So as you can see, it glows really well. Thank you, Katie. Also, uh, before you turn that on, here's my little, my little bat, because he's in black light as well. He's not just white, he, he glows. So does his eyes. Sorry, it's hard to see that. Whee! So this is uh, something that I'm probably going to end up using for my Halloween decor and uh, just pop my little black lights all over my porch and have all the bats. It's gonna be adorable. <laughs> so we have the luminescent colors I can use. I can make it look bronze. Uh, if you guys wanna know how to do the bronze patina, I can go through those steps as well. Or we can just get a little crazy with it and make him glow in black lights. Let me know. Ooh, Jason, I'm dropping pumpkins over here. Uh, while you guys are doing that, I can also show you a little bit more close up of my other sculptures. So there's my hand. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than my actual hand just because that's the, the bulk of the plaster cloth. But inside, if I wanted to pour some kind of a uh, alginate or, uh, not alginate, I'm sorry, resin or plaster of Paris in there, I would then just be able to break this off. But you are going to need to spray some kind of a releasing agent inside in order for this mold to get off of the positive mold. Otherwise, you can just keep it like this, like I did with my foot, and uh, paint it. That hand looks a little like the YouTube like button. It does. So make sure you hit the thumbs up. <laughs> oh, how did you get your hand out of the mold? Oh, that's a good question. How did I get it out of the mold? I cut it off of me. Because I... The thing is, when, when you do plaster cloth molds, this one right here uh, did not get super, super detailed. Like you can see in between the fingers here, they didn't get really in there. Uh, you can get pretty detailed with this. This is why I work in the smaller cloth sections and I don't double it down. Um, cause I'd like to layer one layer at a time and really control my plaster cloth. Uh, so I believe it's either down here. Where did I cut it? I cut it so well, I can't tell. Um, I, did I just rhyme again? It's a rhyming episode. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. You're welcome. Uh, so I think I actually cut it down here. So I had it on my hand. And I actually took the scissors and I just kind of thread it through and then snipped it down until probably about right here um, on the mold. And then I actually ended up just having to wiggle my fingers just a little bit just to pull it out of the mold enough. Uh, and then I you plaster cloth back over top of it, which I believe this is where I cut it because I can actually see that plaster cloth, just that little section here goes in and folds over. So I'm pretty sure that's where I cut it. Um, just to think, because that made me very nervous when you just put those scissors up there. Yep. They do make scissors that will only cut plaster cloth and not cut skin. <laughs> yes, thank you, Katie. <laughs> if you're not as crazy as I am by sticking regular household scissors into your sculptures or sculptures that your friends are in, they do have scissors that specifically cut plaster cloth and not the people in them. <laughs> Girl, when you said you cut it off of yourself, I my first thought was you cut your own hand off. And I was not ready. Listen, I know I'm a skeleton, but no, I'm not that bold. Uh, it was the same thing for my foot. Uh, I actually have a little bit of a patch right here because that's I had to cut it just down uh, the back of my ankle here to get it to kind of bend open just enough 
to get my foot out. Now I usually cut them off of my hand or my foot kind of a thing. Uh, probably within just a few minutes of it being on me. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot for this to start curing, but you don't want it to be fully cured. Because you do want it to have a little bit of wiggle uh, before you get it off of your your hand or foot or leg or whatever you're casting. Yes, we have questions. Yes, uh, once set, will this product reactivate if it gets wet? They're thinking about using this, it outside. I wouldn't use it outside. Um, I'm pretty sure the weathering of this, it will just disintegrate. Do you remember how they used to do casts on people's arms? Yeah. It is the exact same thing. This is, yeah, this is the stuff that they used to put, put casts in shower, do on your arm. The pool. Yeah, you don't, it will reactivate. It doesn't reactivate, it disintegrates. Yeah, it, it's it's a weird, I, that's why I was like, when I was doing his, um, oops, but I got a piece of wire on there. When I was doing the back of his uh, bat wing here, remember how I said I could feel that grittiness? It's going to disintegrate the cured uh, pieces of plaster. I guess that, I hope that makes sense. Um, because it, the water will get in between um, the chunks of the plaster and kind of break it apart because it doesn't really have a good bond um, unless you seal it. I've seen people coat them in resin which would be a lot more outdoor friendly, um, but at that point it's the resin on the outside and you have to fully coat the whole thing, anything exposed, yes. I believe the binder in Plaster of Paris is usually some form of clay. Yep. And because it's not being, um, it's not going Glued. to kiln and being yeah. cured, it's, it's earth, it's gonna fall It's gonna move on you, yeah. Water is a very powerful thing, and it will destroy a lot of things like this. Um, but you can take some precautions, like uh, coating it in a resin. Uh, I would probably do multiple coats of resin on a sculpture like this if you really are just diehard want to put it outside. Um, but do that at your own risk. <laughs> Uh, because you're, if you don't fully coat it in resin or the resin is not strong enough on the, uh, like a thick enough layer, uh, it might crack and then the water can get into those cracks and then you're going to be left with the same exact problems kind of a thing. You have a question? Yes. Uh, what would be a releasing agent? Ah, a releasing agent is Vaseline or Aquaphor, which is the one I happen to have in my box of plaster cloth because this is what I happen to have. <laughs> uh, this has uh, the petroleum. Now that's uh, if you're doing like a life casting on your body. Uh, what? I just remembered something from when we did the other ones. Oh, <laughs> Katie just gave me a crazy look. <laughs> Watch out for hair. On yes. Your body. Um, that's the thing. Eyebrows. Is that, oh yeah. If you're if you're doing a plaster cloth over your face, I will suggest you do a body system just to make sure that if you get yourself into a pickle, you have someone there to make sure that you're okay physically and you can still breathe and stuff like that. But when it comes to body hair, like you can't see it. I have actually quite a lot of arm hair. It hurts so bad. <laughs> My arm hair is blonde and you cannot see it, but it's, it's there and you will know if you have plaster cloth on it and ow. <laughs> It will pull out eyelashes. It yep. will pull out eyebrows. Uh, you have hair on the back of your knuckles yeah. here, on the back of your hands. It's you, Your body is covered in small, fine hairs, and it will find them all. Absolutely. Yes, we have a question. Do you spray with finish or fixative to prevent humidity from softening it? Um, I don't. Those aren't fixed. These are not fixed. Uh, the one, the kid sculpture. How long ago did you guys do that? I want to say it's like eight or nine years ago now. Yeah, that kid sculpture that I was holding was, it's, Katie's saying like eight or nine years, it is not coated in anything. It's just the plaster cloth bandages over the clothing that the kid was wearing. And then they had to cut him out of it. And of course he had all the Vaseline and all of that all over him, which bless that child. <laughs> like, I have no idea how you did this. We, we I'm impressed. those morph suits. Oh yeah, the and morph then suits. Enough on the morph suit where it didn't stick That's to genius. the, the yep. stuff. So then we did need to cut the whole thing off of him. You were okay. good. Yes. 
Uh, so uh, just in case you didn't hear that, she put the child in a morph suit, Vaseline over the morph suit, cut in between the clothes that are still in the plaster, by the way, mm -hmm. and the morph suit and got him out that way. Um, but you need to protect your body if you're doing something like that. Um, and if you're going to do a mold inside of this, um, thank you, uh, there is a spray releaser. Uh, I don't think I put that in the teacher's cart. Uh, it's the mold release spray. Uh, you do want to spray that into the inside of this. So if you do fill this with resin or if you do another plaster cloth, uh, or not a plaster cloth, I'm sorry, a plaster of Paris kind of inverted mold kind of thing, um, and then peel this off, it will actually release it instead of fusing to the mold inside. I hope that makes sense. All right, so what did we choose? How am I painting my little, my little baddie dude? Glow, glow, glow. How are we doing it, Amanda? I have three glows. Okay, we're gonna go glow, glow in the dark. All right, so I do have all my little luminescent colors here. I grabbed just a bunch of different Turner acryl gouache. Uh, I like the Turner acryl gouache uh, personally because it gives it that flat matte finish. Uh, and it also is more permanent like an acrylic. So it doesn't re-wet um, very much. Like I water on here. It's not going to re-wet at all. Uh, it's got that permanence, which is why it has that acryl in the name. It's the acrylic, right? So all the luminescent colors have the word Lumi written on the bottle. And there we go. All right, so... Good thing I have all the things down here. Got my gray, my Soho gray uh, paper palette. And all right, I'm gonna let you guys pick a color. What color? Blue. Blue, blue it is. We're gonna go Lumi blue. We're gonna have a blue bat. He's gonna be adorable. Although you guys are gonna have to figure out what color you want the eyes. Yellow. <laughs> blue and yellow. Uh, red. All right, so I just grabbed a couple of Bessie brushes. Um, when it comes to painting plaster cloth sculptures, I like to use uh, softer bristle brushes. Uh, I probably shouldn't got should have gotten something that's a little bit bigger than this. Um, yeah, Katie, if you can grab me something that's a little bit bigger, because I want to cover a lot of surface with this. Because um, I am going to be getting this is uh, the Turner Crow Wash is concentrated, uh, so I am going to be mixing some water in with it but I don't want to mix a ton of water. Now, where did I put, ah. Uh, I don't want to use my plaster water that was in my bowl here because it's got plaster of Paris in there and that might affect my colors. So I have just uh, my Creative Mark brush washing basin just filled with um, regular water. And you can ignore the pink because it's just stained. I use it all the time for all the things. Ooh, I'll take that big one in your hand. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one, yeah, that's perfect. All right, so I like using the Golden Taclon brushes. Um, they're great for just about anything. Um, and I'm gonna use, the one that I'm using right now is the one inch oval wash. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and then I'm gonna start mixing my luminescent colors in with the water and then just brushing it straight on. Now the plaster cloth sculpture is going to soak this up. Uh, if you don't want it to soak up your colors like this, then you can coat it in a matte medium, which would work uh, to kind of seal it just a little bit. But I like that it soaks it up because you have, let me show you here. You still have, if you, unless you get real um, kind of meticulous with this, I still have some of those holes left from the plaster cloth bandage that are still visible. So you can see kind of when I dry brush on top, uh, it's hitting the surface of that and then you can see uh, kind of where those holes are. Uh, and that's why I like to get my um, my Turner Crew Gouache kind of soupy. That's, a, that's my technical term, guys. Soupy. And then I kind of just let it soak up in there. Now, if you do seal this with a matte medium, you might have less of an issue with those holes because it might get filled in with a matte medium. Um, but it, it doesn't reactivate the plaster. Uh, now, this guy, you guys might notice his wing moves. 
just a little bit. Now I know it's still stable because it has that wire armature in there, but if I come back here, right here where the edge of my, here let me actually paint that kind of bluish so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, right here. Oh yeah, we have the, uh, the, other, the other camera where you guys can see it. All right, so let me make sure you guys can really, there we go. Right here where that crack is is right where it's getting a little wobbly and that's not something that I want. I would, before I actually painted this, if I was, um, if I had a lot more time for you guys, I would probably come back through and put another additional patch of plaster cloth on top of this. Now I know the rest of it's cured and already set, but it's okay, you can go back on top of it and bulk it up that way. Like I said, you can also put these in the oven and you can do Sculpey on top. So if I wanted to get a really detailed face, uh, I could have left that pretty um, uh, smaller than I had already originally sculpted it. And then I could have come back over with Sculpey and then stuck it in my oven to cure that. And then that would have given me all the details of his little face that I wanted. But we're gonna have a blue bat. Fun fact. Frida's favorite color is blue. Hence why we have a blue bat. <laughs> All right, so painting it's pretty straightforward and easy. Um, now, if you wanted to get some variations in color, because we got to make it a little teal, at least a little bit on the show. So mix a little green in with the blue, get a little bit more out here. Um, just for the edge of his wing. Need a little bit more blue. All right, there's my funky luminescent teal, because it will still glow. And then if I want to blend those colors onto the sculpture, I can actually uh, kind of dry brush a little bit where I'm being real light and letting the brush kind of run over the top of those little nooks and crannies of my sculpture. And I want to make the end of it more green. I can do the same thing and kind of blend it into that teal just by hitting the top of that areas of where I was sculpting. Now again, I can still see some of those little white bits kind of coming through. So I really want to make sure I cover that up. Like you can see that down here. Uh, Cause that will be visible. <laughs> and if, that, if you're anything like me, that's gonna drive you crazy. Here we go. I'm gonna bring that blue back in. Sorry, now he's a little bit more of a green bat than a blue bat. <laughs> Let's make him blue. More blue. There you go. And that's how you uh, more or less paint it. Now, with his little feet down here, uh, I actually will paint his feet. Uh, sorry, I have a nose itch, and this is oh, the woes of a skeleton face. <sighs> Try not to scratch my face. <sighs> Sorry, you have one of those stitches on your face. Eh. Anyway, all right, to paint his little feet, I'm gonna ignore it. I'm gonna pretend like it's not there. Um, I will actually go over it with a nice light coating because this is actually more or less raw wire. It's my armature wire. Uh, and it has a little bit of plaster dust on there just because of me handling it as I was sculpting it. But if you touch just a little bit of paint on there, that's dripping. It'll give you kind of the idea of a color and then you can kind of go back on top of that uh, with a little bit thicker. Now again if you want his toes to be more spread out or if you want them closer together you need to make sure you do that before you paint because the Turner Pro Wash um, it always depends on what you use but the Turner Pro Wash is great on rigid sculptures like this. It does not do well with flexibility. So if I were to let this fully cure and then move his toes, that paint is gonna crack and come right back off. Um, 
which again is not a huge deal because I made it and I can fix it. And so if that happens, you know, it's, it's not going to really bother me. Here we go. How are we doing on time? Five minutes left. Five minutes left. All right. We're I'm probably, really probably not going to be able to get it to his eyes for him, but uh, I will actually just completely coat his whole face like this. And then I'll go back in with uh, the paint color for his eyes and pull that right back out. Um, you going to finish it and put it on the Facebook group? Do you want me to finish it and put it on the Facebook group? My blue bat? I feel like our viewers will want you to finish it and put it on the Facebook All group. All right. If you guys want me to finish it and I'll put it on the Facebook group, you guys tell me. Put it in the chat below if you want to see my finished blue funky bat. I actually kind of feel like I need to make him rainbow. Like this side needs to be Ooh, the yellows. <laughs> rainbow bat. Um, that's, that would make me so happy. Uh, and you can get some really fun transitions. Like when you mix in, actually, I'm going to show you on this one just because we have a couple more minutes. This is the Lumi Rose, Luminescent Rose. And if I take that blue, I'm gonna need more blue. When you mix these two together, you get such a pretty purple. It's insane. Look at that. Oh, there's a glare on there. Sorry, hold on, there we go. You guys can see that pretty purple that it's making. Uh, and remember, this is all luminescent colors, so even though I'm mixing them together, they still glow in black light. So they make such pretty transition colors. And let me put some of that on my bat. All right, we're gonna have a rainbow bat. That's, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> YouTube is really excited about the rainbow bat. How fun is that? Uh, um, I'm excited now. All right. So I'm definitely going to finish my bat, but uh, I will post it onto the Facebook live group. Uh, if you guys are not part of the group, uh, make sure you do join um, because, and that's, I think we're probably good with painting. So you guys can go back to my front, front camera view, Katie, please. Um, Cause I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be doing much down here anymore. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to post this fun little rainbow bat. I'm going to finish painting him and then I'm going to post this to the Facebook live group. If you are not part of the group, all you have to do is go on Facebook and search uh, Jerry's live uh, Facebook group and then that is a completely free open to anyone kind of group that is, uh, I think it's like six, it's over 6,000 people at this point, but they're all artists. We all support each other. Uh, it's not just me. So if you ask a question like, hey, I don't know where to sign my art, which is literally something that someone just asked not that long ago. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of beginners. There's a lot of seasoned professionals, people that do art for a living and, you know, freelance, whatever it may be. Um, we're all there to support each other and give you answers if you ever wanted to know. There's no stupid questions. So feel free to come and join the group. Uh, if you do join, though, please make sure you answer that one security question because otherwise you are deemed a robot and robots are not allowed, I'm sorry. Uh, skeletons are. I'm part of the group. They couldn't leave me out. <laughs> but um, it, just to answer that one security question and we will make sure to let you in. Uh, but otherwise I'm gonna also post this to my Instagram page because I'm gonna have to. Just, it's adorable and amazing. And uh, my Instagram, if you want to go check that out, is misscakes.art. Uh, you can see a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that I do here uh, where I, you know, kind of check out all the sculptures. And I actually posted my foot not too long ago. Um, <laughs> all the fun things. But uh, you can see this either on Instagram or Facebook that way. But uh, that was uh, sculptures. Last, any last questions before I jump off of here? Nope. Pretty straightforward. I love it. All right, so if you guys do have any questions, make sure to put it in the chat below. I will double check just to make sure there wasn't anything that I missed. Uh, and if you guys uh, do any sculptures, please make sure to post them to the Facebook group. I would love to see it. Use the hashtag JL218. That way I can search it and find it and, you know, see your sculptures. I'm excited. It's, it's such a fun medium and it's, it's so versatile. You can do fine art sculptures with live casting or sculpting all kinds of crazy things, uh, or you can do goofy little rainbow bats. 
uh, which is technically still fine art. He's a fine art bat. He's adorable. But me and my little skeleton batty are going to get out of here. And I hope you guys have a great night. Happy Halloween. Make sure you stay safe out there. And uh, join me next week because I'm going to have Jeff Olson back on. I know you guys are excited because I'm excited. He's an amazing, amazing artist. And he's going to be going over Amsterdam inks. And it's going to be a fantastic show. So make sure you join me then. I'll see ya. Bye.